Here's a subject that inevitably we all have to deal with, and that's the subject of death. How do you know when it's time to say goodbye? How do you know when it's time to perhaps put your dog down, or, or how do you know when it, basically the, the battle is over? And I'll throw that to either of you veterinarians. Well, I think that it's really important to do two things. First is we need to put our attention on our loved dog because it's so easy to slip into, okay, what do I feel? You know, what does this mean to me? And, and that's very, very important. And that should be addressed in this. And many times speaking with a professional, whether it be a counselor or, you know, some other uh, uh, experienced person who, who can help us through difficult times can help a lot. Um, but the attention ultimately needs to be placed on our love dog. And we need to start to, to analyze the joys in life. And we talk about this in the book. We talk about, okay, what are each of the joys in life that my dog likes? What are the big pinnacles, the, really, the things that really, really make my love dog happy? And we can make a list of these things. And then we can say, okay, how many of these things have gone away? How many of these things are no longer present? And it'll be very, very clear when you start to actually put pen to paper and to analyze this systematically, it'll be very clear when the life quality has tipped to the negative. And if there's going to be no relief, if the joys in life that are gone are going to be gone permanently, and if you add up all of the things that are still left, and then you add up all of the joys in life that have been taken away, and that's going to be a permanent shift, and you realize that the life quality from here on out is not going to be good because all of the, our dog's joys are now gone, it may be time to contemplate allowing our dog to depart. You do an excellent job in the Dog Cancer Survival Guide of going through those life quality things and basically helping people uh, analyze that difficult decision. Um, Dr. Ettinger, do you have some comments on, on I actually you... could, could not agree more with Damien. I actually tell most of my guardians to make a list, um, usually at the, and it's a really hard thing to talk about because they often don't want to bring it up, but make a list right around the time of the diagnosis of maybe the top five things that your dog lives to do, um, you know, runs to the food bowl every night for dinner, greets me at the door can't wait to go for walks, um, you know, loves to sit on the couch with me in the evening and watch t why I'm watching TV, you know, really make a list of, you know, about the top five things. And I think it's important that, you know, maybe when three or four of those things start to fall off the list, that maybe that's when it's time. Um, I can also tell you from personal, you know, for my beloved Paige, um, she lived to eat and, all the other things fell off her list, but she was still eating. And I really thought that would always be the thing that would go. Um, and it didn't. And so for her, it really surprised me that that still was on the list. She was still eating like a fiend, but everything else had really failed in her. And we had to make that, you know, dreadful decision. So again, everything on the list may not be, may not be there at the end, but um, I think it's important to look to see if things are tipping in the other direction and you're seeing most of them fall off the list. It's probably time to make that decision. Dr. Ettinger, Dr. Dressler, thank you so much. There's a lot more information on knowing when to say goodbye and the process of how to do it in the Dog Cancer Survival Guide. Thanks for joining us today. 